Well, here we are yet again. It's time to dance this dance one more time. You'd think after two whole videos on stupid customers, I'd start running out of things to complain about. But no, I honestly think if I chose that, I could do this indefinitely. If you didn't see my previous videos on customers, I'll link them below in the description. And if you haven't done so already, consider subscribing so we can try to spread the awareness of stupid customers and stop this epidemic. Because being a stupid customer is a lot like falling pregnant. The more info you have to prevent it, the less likely you will be to cause it. So enough self-promo, let's get into it. I go cleaning windows to earn an honest ball. Excuse me, do you work here? Oh God, no, this is just how I dress. And I just love coming into shops and stacking shelves. Seriously though, what the fuck kind of question is that? So there you are, top to toe in a work uniform and every tread in the fabric screams, I work in this establishment. It's got the shop logo, my name tag and the word staff in the biggest fucking letters you could possibly fit on the back of it. How in the living, breathing fuck do you even doubt that I work here? Do these clothes look like something I could pick up in a typical clothes shop? Do I seem dressed in a casual manner? And even if I wasn't wearing the uniform, I'm stacking a fucking shelf. Does that look like something people do for a laugh? I bet the smartest part of you ran down your mother's leg. For a nosy parker, it's an interesting job. You'll be suffering through another day in purgatory. <laughs> I mean, in retail. There you are in autopilot mode, getting through customers and doing all that dull menial shit like wiping down the counter for the 11th time today, out of fear you'd be given something even more mind-numbing to do. When you get this customer... You know what, you could be more enthusiastic at work. You're very lucky to have a job. You could try smiling more. You fucking slapper. Who the fuck asked your opinion? Well, since you're so happy to share, let me return the favour. So listen here, cunt flaps. Not all of us were born with a silver spoon thrust deep in our cunt. Some of us actually had to go out and work for a living. And not only do we have to work, we have to work these fucking bottom-feeding jobs that involve dealing with idiots, arseholes, and self-obsessed, stuck-up cunts like yourself. We also have to do this for shit pay while working under some cunt manager whose only life goal is to threaten to fire me every single time I show up seven seconds late, but completely ignores the fact I had to stay an extra half an hour the day before to help him out. And every day is the exact same routine of serving customers and stacking shelves, which wouldn't be so bad if I wasn't forced to wear stupid, uncomfortable shoes despite the fact I'm on my fucking feet all day. So tell me, dick lips, what the fuck do I have to smile about, eh? Now fuck off to our HR department and complain about why the person in the shit dead-end job wasn't willing to paint a smile on for you. And have a nice day. In my profession, I'll work hard, but I'll never stop. There you are with a large line of people waiting to be served when a person and their child approaches. That'll be two euro, please. Okay, give the money to the boy. Whoa, 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 let me fucking stop you there. First of all, it's give the money to the man. I'm older than you, so don't refer to me as boy. Second, do you not see the long line of people standing behind you? Does this seem like the most opportune time to teach your little gremlin how to buy things in a shop? And thirdly, your child is like four years old. She is far too young to know how to do things without her parents. Isn't that right, Madeline? I'll climb this blinking ladder till I get right to the top. Excuse me, would you mind lifting this out to my car? Yeah, fine. So where's your car? Excuse me, could you help me out? What? Obviously I fucking can't you dense twerp. Can't you see I'm already with a customer and my fucking hands are full? So what in the tit flicking fuck made you think I've the ability to help you right now? I'm clearly too busy. And if you actually took a second to open your fucking eyes, you'd see there's another staff member not five feet away who's neither helping a customer nor do much of fucking anything. So this is just a hunch. Maybe he can help you. Though if you couldn't already make the right choice on which one of us to approach, I reckon the kind of help you need is a little bit more of the professional variety. Blushing bride, she looks divine. The bridegroom, he is doing fine. You've turned off the open sign. The shutter on the door is halfway down. People are being turned away at the door. There is someone going around the shop sweeping up. Every till bar one in the shop is closed up. The music's turned off. And the final nail in the closing coffin. This announcement is played throughout the shop. Ladies and gentlemen, could you please bring your purchases to the checkout as the store is about to close? Hurry up, come on. Now it's all very obvious right now, but you will still have people approach the counter and ask, What time do you close at? What time do we close at? What in shit do you mean, what time do we close at? Is this a joke? Are you trying to be funny? No. Really, this is a genuine question. Even with all the signs being thrust in your face like a plumber's cock in a porn film, you're still unaware. It's just a simple question. Well, here's a simple answer. We close now, you brain dead twat. And I'd rather have his job than mine when I'm cleaning windows. Granted, if you've never worked in retail before, you're probably guilty of this. Fuck it. I was guilty of this before I even worked in retail. But let me explain. When you open your till in the morning, you have a float, which is a predetermined amount of money that's left in the tills overnight that you have to open with. Typically, it's about 200 quid, the majority of which is coins. Very little notes. It's essentially a precautionary measure that if somebody breaks in in the middle of the night, they won't be able to get away with a whole lot of money because the majority of it is in the safe. So the float is all you'll have to get you through the day until you start building up money from transactions. Now, as I said, you'll have very little notes, maybe two or three tenors and five or six fivers. So it only takes one person to make the rest of your morning frustrating as fuck. 
Because life being a funny fucker that it is, you're guaranteed the first fucker to come through that door will be buying something worth 25 cent and they'll pay you with a 50 fucking note. Which completely clears you out of all notes when the next person comes along and inevitably pays with a 50. And you have to give the cunt change and, well, change and lots of it. What wrecks my head most about this is when you have to give them a load of change, you'll ask them if they possibly have a smaller note. And they fucking do. They've only come into the shop with the purpose of buying something small to get change. This is not a fucking bank, chap. Chambermaid, sweet names I call. It's a wonder I don't fall. Why do people think it's completely okay to be nattering away on their phones while they're being served in a shop? It's gotta be one of the most rude things the cunts can do. There you are, serving them away. You look up to ask them cash or card, just to realise the cunts are facing the other way, jabbering away on their phones, and they didn't even hear you speak. Do they think they're so fucking self-important that they couldn't just leave it ring out and call them back? You wouldn't answer your phone halfway through a funeral because you know how rude and disrespectful it is. So why do you think it's different here? Fuck it, there doesn't even need to be a phone involved. It's considered very fucking rude to cut somebody off mid-conversation and start a whole new conversation with somebody else. Full stop. I would love to see the expression on these cunts' faces if I was halfway through serving them and decided to jump on my phone and make them wait. Could I get a ah, pa, 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 pa. Don't be so rude. Can't you see I'm on the phone? Some people. My mind's not on my work at all when I'm cleaning windows. So a customer puts all his shit in the counter, you scan it all through, you look up to find out he's just fucked off. He's wandered off around the shop to pick up more shit, leaving people waiting to be served that I can't serve because the till is filled with his shit and his transaction is still up on the screen and it can't be processed. So I can't even serve these people who are waiting until candle arse wanders back, leaving them standing there and me clenching my jaw in frustration while the people in the queue stare at me like I'm the fucking problem. Look, I understand if you get to a counter and you've suddenly realised you've forgotten something and run off to grab it. This shit happens to the best of us. But these gowls haven't forgotten anything. They've just casually fucked off for another look. The counter is not a fucking storage area. Genuinely though, true story, once I was serving a person who did this to me, there was no one else around when they wandered off, so I took the time while they were gone to crush their cookies, squash their cake, and I pricked a few small holes in their milk carton with a stapler, and pro tip, it won't actually leak until the lid is open because of pressure and science, and I put all their shit in the bag before they came back so they didn't notice. I'm surprised she actually never came back to complain now that I think about it. She probably did, but I think my boss knew if he fired me it would only make me happy. <laughs> Okay, here's a few quick fire things that don't need fleshing out, but they're just as fucking annoying. Would you believe I only came in for a bag of sugar? If I twist my balls so they're above my cock and put two little dots in them, I kinda looks like a face with a long nose. What? Oh, I'm sorry, I thought we were playing a game where we tell each other shit neither one of us cares about. Under no circumstances is it okay for you to pay with money you've just pulled out from your nasty, sweaty tits. Unless, of course, you're okay with me using your change to wipe the sweat off my balls before handing it back to you. She pulls her hair all down behind it. I'm sorry, this is not scanning. I'm going to have to get a proper code for it. Oh, sure, if it doesn't scan, it must be free. Oh, hardy fucking hair. You're so fucking funny. I definitely haven't heard that a hundred times before. But since we're being funny, let me try that observation with you. You're ugly, so you're going to die alone. Then pulls down her, never mind. Do you sell cassette tapes? Sure, they're just down here next to my time machine. And after that, falls down the blind. Last, but certainly not least. My God, it's lovely weather outside, isn't it? I wouldn't know, because as you can see, I'm standing here. And not outside. And I don't know if you've noticed, but this shop doesn't have windows. Look, I get you're just trying to start a conversation to get rid of the awkward silence out of the air. But by rubbing my face in the fact that I'm standing here and not outside enjoying the lovely weather is not what I'd call a good conversation starter. So next time, why don't you try, how are you doing? Actually, no, better just stick with the silence.